Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the Android Central Podcast. It's episode number 120. That's 120 podcasts. Today is Thursday, December 20th, 2012. <laughs> I had to look because apparently I didn't realize it was Thursday again, which is the day we always do this show. I am Phil Nickinson, your host, editor of AndroidCentral.com, and the guy who can't stop his right arm from doing this, apparently. Mm-hmm. Welcome to what may be our last show of the year. Maybe. Haven't decided. What do you guys think? Should we decide right now? Jerry, Alex. Jerry and Alex from the site. Everybody knows them. Mm. Last show of the year. Howdy. Uh, We are always going to do whatever you say we should do. You haven't learned that yet. Then afterwards, we'll get with each other and say, damn, Phil, he should have never done that. We should have said something. Nah. You guys are so lame. Somebody make a decision. (laughs) Uh, let's say next. Yes, week last show next Thursday. Yeah, last week, L- last completely show. Completely trashed and lay out on the porch. All right, last show of the year, guys. Let's make it good. Um, that's it. I'm done. I got nothing else. <laughs> See you. in <laughs> Let's not spoil a good show by talking. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Hey, the chat room's here, by the way. If it's your first time, welcome. If it's your first time in the last show of the year, that's actually kind of cool, especially if the world ends because of this whole Mayan thing. But I don't think it's going to because it would have already. Oh. Chat room's here. We do this live on Thursday nights. Alex, Jerry, chat room. Jerry, Alex, chat room. Chat room, Alex. <laughs> what do you guys want to talk about? Jerry and I were trying to come up with links earlier, and I mean, kind of a slow week, right? It's not that there's unimportant stuff, but I kind of don't care about a lot of it. You know what I did last weekend? I went to, uh, I went to New Orleans. Actually, here's the big news. I finally started playing Ingress. Yeah. Like, <laughs> sort of. I'm a lowly level one and can't really do anything, but I'm playing it. Because I finally, uh, I went to New Orleans last weekend with my wife to celebrate her birthday. She's 40. She's old. She's older than I am, but she's still hot. What? No. I got a hold older wife. I'm proud of it. She's proud of it. Um, so we went to New Orleans, and, and right as we get there, like I pull into the hotel, and I get this email saying, hey, you can now change factions. So I, I totally screwed up and didn't listen to uh, smarter people. Who said, you know, take a look at, at the map and what you have uh, and, and what's going on in your area. And if it's totally dominated by one side, pick the other side because then you'll have some fun. And uh, I totally didn't listen to that. So we get to New Orleans, like get in the hotel and I get the email and then I forward it to Jerry. It's like, look, look, I got it. Now I can play. So I'm trying to pay attention to my wife on her birthday weekend and vacation in New Orleans and play Ingress at the same time. She's like, what are you doing? Mm, nothing. Don't worry about it. I got home and now I'm playing and it's like totally dominated by like two guys there, three guys maybe. And so I'm just kind of wandering around hacking stuff. Jerry, do you still have portals by your strip club? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I mean I, national landmarks. My wife got her invite, so I I'm letting them discharge completely so the five portals within driving distance are open and she can play a little bit too. I can't find any open portals here. I, I can't find any people playing Ingress here, so I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just you and your wife. You should be on opposite sides. Well, that's what I was gonna do at first, but you don't know my wife. I got my she, kids into it though. Uh, me and I, my my six year old, we were driving around the other day. She's like, "Dad, what are you doing up there?" And I I would <laughs> stop before I would play. You know, it's sitting in the <laughs> holder, so I'm not like holding the phone and driving my kid around. But Dad, what are you doing? What's all that sound? And you know, the sounds are kind of scary if you've heard it at all. And, uh, but now we were, you know, the whole family was going somewhere the other night. Said, dad, dad, do that thing. Do your portal thing. Okay. If I have to. And my wife's like, what the hell are you guys talking about? <laughs> so, I don't know. That's, that's what I've been up to. What have you guys been up to? Mm, not a whole lot. It's been a quiet week, isn't it? it, it we've, has. We've, had, we've had security scares and we've had I mean, it has, other yeah, right. bits it, it, and pieces, it, but. It hasn't. It hasn't. Um, all right. So, what was it? Sunday, the Samsung Exynos thing went down. I, I saw it when I woke up before we left town, and uh, started driving home. And Jerry, you want to walk us through it? Wait. Actually, I want to see if I get it right. So, every phone has a specific kernel for that phone, right? That's that's written for that phone's processor. Let me oversimplify it. Right. 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 Okay. So, and that's all custom. That's not. I mean, you can call it Android, you can say it's a Google, but it's not really, right? So for a Samsung phone, Samsung comes up with that. For an HTC phone, HTC comes up with it. Sony and so on and so on, right? Close. In conjunction with the, uh, with the uh, processor manufacturer, I guess? Uh, yeah, they, 
there, there's a kernel. I mean, there's a kernel source tree. Everybody grabs it. Mm-hmm. But what you were saying, those people all have to modify certain parts of it okay. based on the hardware they're supporting. So what happened was there is a hole, basically, an exploit that somebody found. Uh, I'm sorry, I forget his name on XDA. And basically allows any application you know, to inject into that exploit to gain root access to the phone without you knowing it. That part, you're a little off the mark. All right. You've well, been fine the rest. Nerds may take issue. It's not an exploit. It was done on purpose because oh, it really? worked so well. A oh, side yeah. effect is that it leaves a folder open, read and write by anybody, and that folder contains all the information that's in the device's RAM, uh, which is not a good thing. Gotcha. I, I think part of the reason why this was a big deal is because that's – I mean, from a programming perspective, that's a really kind of that's kind of a big, you know, a big yeah. oversight and a big security hole. You don't to, want a folder that with a file that just contains the whole of your memory. That seems to yes, to to nerds and assorted Linux geeks and engineering types, this is about the worst ex. You know, and I'm using the word exploit. This is about <laughs> the worst bug that you could you, somebody could make. Yep. This is just horrible. It's it's something that nobody understands how it could happen. Blah blah blah. But on the user side. It's, you know, it, it can only happen if you, like anything else, if you install stuff you don't understand or trust. Well, in, in the big scary headline is it, an application could potentially gain access to your phone, blah, 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 blah. Correct. But, you know, go through the top, you know, 20, 50 applications that are in Google Play. You know, that's not going to be an issue, right? Oh, sure. I mean, I mean they're not going to suddenly update. <laughs> with this exploit in there and, and, and ooh, we can get them now. I mean, that that's not going to happen. And it's, look, it's not every phone. It, it's got to be these specific Samsung phones. It's a big deal. I'm not saying it's not a big deal. So yeah, no yeah. It's, it's a big deal because the kind of vulnerability that it is and the, the just the sheer number of these phones that are out there. Right. If you look at the, right. like the combined numbers of, of Galaxy Note 2s, international Galaxy S3s, um, and Galaxy S2s, then that's that's probably somewhere in the region of 40 or 50 million phones. So that's a lot of devices that have got to get patched. Yeah. And... It's the uh, Exynos that Samsung was shopping around trying to sell to Motorola and Huawei and Mizu and everybody else. That's There's a lot of other phones out there. I'm not sure of all of them. I'm not up on the Asian phones, but there are a lot of other phones that use the 4400 series Exynos. And, you know, yeah, it's, I think... Go on. I was just going to say, it's it's something that really needs addressed really quickly. But for users... Yeah, and- and Samsung had a pretty quick response for us this week. They said, uh, you know, they're working on getting an update prepared as quickly as possible. And they've, you know, it was less so in the U.S. because it takes time for things to get um, certified by carriers. But generally, they've been pretty good with updates. And, you know, from what we've already seen, just rolling out new features. Um, I think that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the devices out there were patched, or especially the more recent ones, before we start to see anything, any any serious malware being developed around this thing. I hope so. I mean... This is the kernel. There's no way that Samsung can just push out a small update bypassing the carrier. Uh, you know, Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, you've, you've got us worried just as much as Samsung. I mean, let's hope everybody works together and gets it out there because that's all we need is one application start to make the rounds because this mm. one, it's, it's pretty big if you get it. It's just hard to get. Right. So here's the thing: we had we had another Samsung security scare a few months back. Um, the one to do with USSD codes, and uh, you know, uh, supposedly a uh, um, a lot of phones were affected where you could uh, either click a link or go to a web page or whatever, and it would either reset your phone or whatever else. Um, I, if we do, we have any idea how Samsung's done with patching that? I know a lot of the, the older phones um, didn't have it. Some of the newer ones have already been patched. But has anyone been keeping track of that? Do we know how that's yes. gone? I. I use my my Galaxy S2. I kept it on, uh, you know, I'm going to keep it on gingerbread, so I have a gingerbread phone here. But I have been watching the updates in case this browser patch is in any of them. I know I'm going to have to take it, and they haven't sent one out for it yet. Hmm. And that's that's an annoyance more than a critical. Yeah. Uh, I I take it pretty heavily because I happen to have one of the phones, but. This is different. This they need to get on quickly. Do you think? I mean, in the way Jerry wrote it was it's 
a lot up to Samsung and also a lot up to the carriers to actually change something. Are we going to, yep. you know, see them slow it down like they have in the past? I'm, you know what? I'm afraid we are. I mean, I hate to say it, but it's it doesn't affect their bottom line. It's not going to get the priority that something that affects their bottom line would get. The good news is there are apps out there that will uh, yep. actually fix this for you if you're worried about it. Super Curio put one out. I think Chainfire's got stuff for Root. I mean, there are a whole bunch out there, and, and not just those two. Um, other people have been have been paying yep. us on them. So, I mean, if you're really worried about it, you can go patch this pretty easily. And, and you don't need and Root you access. Should. You know? Yeah. Uh, from yeah, my yeah. understanding, some of the newer ones don't affect the camera anymore either. So there's there's no reason not to patch. It's fun to see the community you know, come together and fix mm-hmm. stuff like this. And And... I mean, this is one of those things that I think actually wasn't really blown out of proportion. A lot of times, you know, I hate, hate to call them exploits when, you know, when it could just be a bug. You know, somebody right. you know, screwed something up somewhere. But in this one, again, it's serious. It's not not serious. But, you know, the sky is not falling here. And it's, you know, the sky's been falling in other places this week. Maybe that's why. <laughs> you want to talk about those? Actually, no. Hang on. I want to talk about the uh, what was this one called? Spam Soldier. Oh, oh. something like that. Yeah. Was, I was, yep. Yeah. Spam Soldier SMS Botnet. I was so close to not even writing about this. So we get press releases from uh, from some of these security companies every now and then. And Lookout, you know, and Lookout's a company we trust, right? I mean, I I right. don't think they're out to uh, to screw anybody. But at the same time, these security companies. It's in their best interest, I think, to maybe make things seem a little more serious than they are or to to kind of couch it, things in scary language. It's, it's always good when, when a news release goes out and there's a, you know, there's a scary vulnerability and the name of a program that can protect you from it in there. That's always good for right. business for them. And, and, and again, that's their business. I get that, yeah. right? I mean, th- their job is to sell their stuff. And as long as you know that going into it, I think it's fine. And And the cool thing about it is, all these apps generally have some other features that I think are really good. You know, all the things to find your phone and to wipe your phone if you lose it. Like, that's really good stuff. So I, I don't mean to, to be that down on them. But the problem is these stories get picked up and twisted a little bit. So there's this spam soldier SMS botnet. And here's what it is. You get a spam text message. And then it says, hey, here's a free application. Go and click it. Oh, wait, but you're going to have to turn off the unknown sources thing, you know, the little checkpoint that keeps you from installing anything from outside Google Play. So go ahead and turn that off and then install this application. And then, hey, you're going to have a free game. Cool, huh? Sweet. Only it's not a free game. It's a you know, piece of malware that starts sending out 100 text messages from your phone, propagating itself even further. Uh, last I saw, it didn't do anything worse than that. But... You know, the problem is you start seeing headlines that, oh, here's more malware for your Android, and it's just stupid. And anyone who can take 30 seconds to read, and especially read the parts that say, you know what, this really isn't that big a deal. In fact, what were their words? Um, it's unsophisticated and relatively limited. So why is it, you know, why is it so scary for certain websites? And I'm not going to name them. You know who they are. But it's, God, this stuff pisses me off. It's just... Oh. Mm. Phil, you know how it works, Phil. I mean, I know. It, it, in your RSS feed, the words Android and malware in a post title, that's it's gold. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, you know, I guess everybody's got to make money. I'm glad that you try to have us make money different ways. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I was thinking about it this week, Jerry, and I think it comes back to what you keep saying. These phones, you need to treat these phones like a computer. Agreed. You know, when you, no, you should not click on any piece of email that comes in that looks really sketch and that you don't know who it's from. Would you click on a link out of that? No. Would you open up some, you know, doc file or God forbid, some doc file that says dot PHP at the end, you know, just a little bit of common sense. Never mind the fact that you have to circumvent, you know, default security policies that are already there. And it's a it's an old one and a simple one, which is mm-hmm. the unknown forces thing. That's one of the first things I turn off whenever I get a phone, but I know what I'm doing a little bit. Right. It's well. It's, it's the way it bypasses Android security is that it gets the user to bypass Android security. Right. It's not exactly. a flaw with Android. If you click that link, it's your own fault, really. And if you, yeah, <laughs> it's it's just like a Linux or a Mac desktop. Everybody says there's no malware for Linux or Mac, and in essence, they're right. The only way you can get 
something that will harm your system is when you click a button that says, please put this on my system. Uh, it's, you know, people tricking you into putting the wrong stuff on your system. That's, that's what the goal is on Android. And right. it's horrible, but those people are out there. I hope they die in a fire. <laughs> Wow. Sorry. <laughs> I was getting all Christmassy all of a sudden, and then you just brought me down. After, mm. uh, very very after, ap- apocalyptic, though, isn't it? It's very topical. It, it really is. It's been such a weird week. I was I was down the whole school thing in Connecticut Friday, and if anybody follows me, I think you could tell I was pretty bummed. I got kids that age. And and then what was there something else going on? I don't remember. Instagram doesn't have me down. I think everybody freaked out a little bit about that, but it's just I'm getting Christmassy all of a sudden, and then Jerry's bringing me down with malware again. <laughs> Damn spam! I'm sorry. Oh, you I'll know what it right. is. You know it has me down. It's all the CS spam I've been dealing with today. Oh god, yeah, it's getting worse. <laughs> just today, I've had so much. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, now, Instagram, you guys care at all? So Instagram changed its terms of service, and everybody freaked out, and people freaked out because of how much people were freaking out. And, I mean, here's how I see it. You've read all the stories. I'm not going to rehash it. Here's how I see it. You're using a free application to post photos to a free service. And they want to use your photos to do, you know, a little bit of marketing. And and it's not even, you know, they're not going to sell your photos. They were never going to sell your photos. They don't well, care no, about No, because your Instagram photos look like crap. Nobody wants yeah. to buy them. It's your head, people. <laughs> they don't care about your cat or your food or whatever shoes you're wearing, or your legs at the beach. I mean, I, I exactly. I mean, Paul C. in the terms. It's just like Facebook, yes. Um, it's So people freaked out about that. It's not that big a deal. But for me, I mean, it's it's a free app and a free service that's really popular. And I see all these posts, like five you know alternatives to Instagram, and they're all applications. Well, that's not what the big deal was. I mean, the filters and the square images, anybody can do that, right? It's and everyone it's is social doing aspect. It and yeah, I mean, I haven't quit Instagram. I don't know if I'm going to. I mean, here's why I use it. It's an easy way to share photos to five different things and spam the hell out of my friends all at one time. Hmm. The only reason I use it. The only reason I care. They won't let me back in. I oh, that's right. You Instagram. got banned. Oh, uh, what do you do? I don't know. I'm not sure. I got banned from Instagram back when they... <laughs> the, you know, Apple Android kids were fighting. I just couldn't control myself. I forget. But I know what did you post? Do you remember? I well, no. I can remember that it wasn't anything that I wouldn't want my mom to see. There was no <laughs> testicles or anything involved. It was <laughs> Have just your mom seen those. It, it was probably. I, I don't know. I'm not sure, Phil. Uh, I think he remembers. I'll get him to tell me later. I'll tell all you guys. I'll put it in and post. Yeah. It's, <laughs> It's, you know, it's it's much to do about nothing, and I'm really not going to freak out about it. I'm, maybe it's the holiday season, because I just don't care right now. I want to have a good time. I want to drink some wine and champagne and eat some food and get even fatter than I've already gotten yeah. since November. And go to Vegas and go to CES and get back to work. <laughs> I don't care about Instagram. I don't care about patents. Oh, my God. So, you want to talk about that for a second? Mm. I have to pre- I have issued an executive order, and I'll say it publicly, because yesterday Jerry says, all right, somebody's going to do this patent story. I said, hell no. Don't do it. I don't care anymore. I do not care anymore. These, these patent stories that, you know, A, I don't understand, and, you know, we've, we've talked about this before. You know, there, there are only one or two people who I actually trust to understand this stuff. One of them is Neelay Patel at The Verge, um, you know, because he's trained in this, right? This is like when we Phil, used to Phil, do wait, the, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Is the other one me? Sure. You said one or two people. Oh, okay. I sure. can sleep better tonight. No, I mean, this was like when we... Oh, hi. I have a visitor. What's up? Hello. You want to say hi to the podcast since it's Christmas? Hello. Hello. You're, yes. you're on video, too, so say hi. Hi. All right. What's up? <laughs> oh, yeah. Your iPod is in here. Here it is. Yes, my daughter uses an iPod. I dare you to say something right now. Good night. <laughs> Love you. Close the door. No, I I liken these patent stories to when I was at the newspaper and they would do, you know, we, we'd do a brief whenever somebody went to court for the first time. 
It's their first appearance, and they pleaded not guilty. That's what they always do. They have to. The judge will not let you plead guilty on the first appearance, right? So it, it, it's these process stories, and I just don't care anymore. You know, we're going to do a patent story if it pulls a phone off the shelf or if it's going to trial or it's something big. I, you know, these patent process stories, they're one-offs, and I honestly do not care anymore. So there you have it. The refrigerator war was the only war I cared about when it was <laughs> over. <laughs> you fought in the refrigerator war, didn't you, Jerry? Yeah. LG1, that right? was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember the uh, Jedi's didn't Twitter want me to, but they did anyway. <laughs> Oh, man. So, that I mean, that's... I don't care about Instagram's terms of service. I don't care about patents. There was something else I didn't care about this week. What was it? Anybody remember? Oh, there's uh, lots of things you said you didn't care about this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what was it? Put my priorities back in order, I think. I got all these good phones here. Oh, I know what it was, but... I think I know. Wasn't it that, oh, my God, we're going to see a phone that's kind of like the phone we already see on Verizon at CES from a certain company in Taiwan? And everybody's oh. going gaga, but it's like you've been oh, saying. Oh, yeah, the M7. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Well, no. I was oh, no. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're um, the M7 cool. rumors going around about whatever's next for HTC. And I haven't seen anything there that you wouldn't expect already, right? I mean, it's just specs at this point. Um you know, it's it's design and what they do next with the software that I'm interested in. And we have this talk every year, right? Um, the other one is NVIDIA and what's coming up with what people are starting to call Tegra 4. I don't know if it's going to be Tegra 4 yet. Um, you know, it's, it's not a bad assumption. But, again, I don't think there's anything new in that leaked slide that came out this week. Um, everything looks right on schedule to me. And they've been, you know, this one's Wayne, the, the code name Wayne. Um and is it gray that's up next? I forget which. And this is so. all stuff so. that they've been showing for months and months. And they said, here's where we're going. Here's the next step. Here's the next step. So, I mean, we're going to see something at CES, I think. But it's, you know, it's going to be good. It's going to be better. It's six times better. Okay, cool. You know, whatever that means. But we've seen that even the leap from Tegra, you know, 2 to Tegra 3 to Tegra 3 Plus, a lot of it comes down to the software that's on these devices. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, for as good as Tegra 3 was, and, and it was not bad, right? But you saw how much better Qualcomm was able to make the same phone, was, was able to make, you know, this phone versus this phone, and they're the same damn phone, right? And, you know, so it's, it's back and forth. And it's fun to see, but I haven't seen anything yet that's come out in the past week that's just like, holy crap, this is awesome. Or am I wrong? Yeah, no, it, it's right. all it's all specs at this stage, isn't it? And yeah. you, you're never going to be able to translate those, you know, the, the chart that's come out into how's it going to perform on some imaginary phone that we don't know what it is that we don't have yet. Yeah, I mean, we're we're going to see new stuff, and and again, go back to how excited we all were about the One X, and I still think it was a really good phone. A lot of people soured on it, and, and I think some of that has to do with you know, the phones that came out right afterwards. Um, but these are not bad phones. I really hope HTC kind of makes some inroads in its in its software department and and just gets those. It, it it's like it just has all these rough edges, and they just need to smooth them out and get it working right. And they're so close; they really are. Um, Samsung's the opposite. I think Samsung you know optimizes the crap out of everything and has it running great, but the design is lacking in the software. And mm. it's I I think we talked about did we talk about it last week? Or I, I'm just finding everything two dimensional in Samsung stuff now. Whereas Android, mm-hmm. you know, AOSP design, you know, Matias Duarte and stock Android has really gone a step further. Um, HTC has always been, you know, colorful and, and had some depth to its design. And TouchWiz just doesn't. And it's it's not just TouchWiz. I think LG is the same way. Um, a lot of yeah, well, I think I, I think the reason for it, in, it with Samsung stuff is the way they designed the S3, and that that was the first device that had the, the TouchWiz Five, whatever you want to call it. Um, was all the development of that phone, not just in software, but in general, was siloed away. The people that were working on different parts of it had no idea of the whole, and that was for, for security. I, I um, but that's what it was. I've I've had discussions with people, you know, that the, that there were so many versions of that phone coming out, and, and just yeah, the industrial yeah. design changed so many times, and and what they ended up going with, which is really really good. I've been playing with it again this week. It, it, the Galaxy S3 isn't my main phone anymore. 
Um, but oh, by the way, since we talked last, it now has uh, Jelly Bean on it. Now it's four one, not four two. Um, so that's stock. But I've already taken that off, <laughs> and and I'm waiting for Signed and Mod ten point one to come out. Well, it, it's out now for this. By the way, you want to talk about nightly build real quick? Since we have all these new nightly builds coming out, you might want to wait. Sure. That's my point. <laughs> I, I hate seeing all these posts. You know, nightly builds are out. Go get it. Well, don't just go get it. A nightly build is not a stable build, and here's one reason why. I don't have data on this. I have Wi-Fi. But uh, you don't have cell data in the uh, CM 10.1 that's out right now. You know, they're going to fix it, and they're going to fix it really soon, I'm sure. But the first two builds, it just doesn't work. An, an yeah, I've got, it on, I've got it on the Nexus 7. It seems pretty stable, um, but that's... Different nowhere near as complex as, uh, as the S3, is it? Yeah, no. I mean, different device. I'm not knocking anybody here. It's, you know, these are nightly builds, so that's that's my point. You, you know, as long as you understand what you're getting into, and if you can, you know, you can flash back and do all this stuff and, and get data on it with CM 10.1, that's fine. That's not my point. My point is, you know, when you hear nightly build, don't necessarily just run out and flash it without knowing that, hey, something's going to be wrong, probably. That's, yep, you know, that's a fair comment. Fact. Yeah, especially early nightly builds. I mean, later on, after a month sure. or so, things start to Absolutely. things start to work. But when they first come out, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's broken. Yeah, and I and I knew this going into it, so that's that's my thing. Um, hmm. we're kind of ranty tonight, <laughs> and we've covered everything on the script, so it's like freeform rant. <laughs> <laughs> um. Google Plus update? Do you guys care? Is it good for you? Uh, the photosphere on the app itself was cool. When it finally yeah, that's, some, that's yeah. something that needed to happen. D- did you see what happened when I was in New Orleans? So I, I took some, you know, a couple of really good photospheres, and I'm posting them from there. And I haven't quite tested it 100% to see what was going on. But they only posted as, as uh, panoramas. They wouldn't post as the photosphere. As soon as I got back, and I tested a couple times, I tested on Wi-Fi, and I tested... On Straight Talk here, you know, it's T-Mobile Straight Talk, so whatever. I mean, it's all T-Mobile data, right? And it worked just fine. So it was really odd. And they, you know, wasn't in the same place. It was in, you know, two different locations, miles apart. So I don't, it was really odd. I'm glad I got them posted, because a couple of them were pretty good, actually. I think the best ones I've done. I think Photosphere might be my favorite Google feature for the past year. What do you guys think? I like it. Now that I've learned to do it, uh, at first I thought it was just a janky piece of crap because I wasn't using it right. Uh, but now I think it's awesome some of the pictures you can take with it. What's your and, and if you I mean what do you mean when you weren't using it right? What is your uh, I was moving too fast. I wasn't yeah. I would jump from like let's go up and down, no now let's go side to side. You don't. <laughs> I mean you do a concurrent square and just keep, you know, a regular pattern. And your pictures will turn out great as long as you go nice and slow. Uh, I took one out in the middle of a cattle field with a bunch of cows and some old farm tractors and shit, you know, just sitting around. And it turned out great. I mean, not a single ugly spot in it. And it's because I just sat down on a rock and took my time and did it right. So it's really cool if you want to play with it. Yeah, I mean, if you can keep yeah. people from moving around in it, and if you can keep yeah. from having anything too close to you, I think it works really, really well. Yeah, the biggest thing is that the time it takes to take the, all these different little pictures that make up the the whole. So it's um, right. mm-hmm. yeah, just I think the biggest thing is just take your time with it, and uh, yeah. I think it, I mean I I can't wait to get to Vegas and and try some new stuff and get to Barcelona and I need a London trip, Alex. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to them see if anyone can launch a phone over here appreciate it Italy maybe Italy would be nice I'm going to go do some more cool photo spheres somebody needs to launch a phone in DC so you all can come visit me I know god I love DC DC is one of my favorite cities and like I don't mind being a tourist there because they're you know yeah, everybody's a tourist yeah you, you kind of are um, no it's it is a great great town i love dc so much fun stuff new orleans it was nice going back to new orleans oh you know what's funny so you remember uh ctia the uh evo 4g lte was was it announced right then i think it was maybe the week before so yeah um but they gave you know they gave us all review units and, and put us on a bus and uh sent us on a tour to take pictures 
so they could show off the camera and, and blah blah blah. So we went to like we went to a cemetery and got out. We went to uh, the Ninth Ward and got out. And I'm like, I'm not taking pictures in the Ninth Ward. That's just creepy. But uh, mm. so my wife and our our friends who were there with us last week, we go on the city tour because they wanted to do it. Same bus driver as we had in May. Dude, and he remembered us. He's like, oh yeah, you guys were. They just wanted you to take pictures, so we like didn't stop anywhere. So yeah, that's about it. And uh, <laughs> how crazy is that? kind of cool i thought you guys don't care, uh, apparently. well i mean we don't know the guy <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure he's you know, a very nice cool gentleman thing. if he's listening we're we're glad that you have gainful employment at this poor economy yay what are you talking? <laughs> was that oh, nice enough i mean i don't no, know the bus what driver was awesome i'm talking about you guys for not caring oh well see okay i don't i should pay better attention let me turn no. john denver off here, here's your big fat plug. Jason at Cajun Encounters. Use him. He was awesome. Like, see you in well, five cool. more months. I, I love New Orleans. I'll have to look him up Absolutely. next time I'm down there. The other cool thing we did is we finally, you know, we got out of the heart of the French Quarter and away from Bourbon Street and went down to Frenchman and, uh, and actually sat down and, and listened to some good music and, and the yep. good clubs down there. Hi, oh. Jared, Andrew, if you're out there, I'm sorry. We didn't go in May. We'll do it next time, I promise. Oh, man. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Alex's Galaxy mm. Camera. If you haven't read it yet, go read it. It's an expensive camera. It's a camera. Oh, speaking of uh, Android cameras, let's talk about that other one. That yeah, the Polaroid one that was rumored. I think it's actually been confirmed now by some executive somewhere or other. But it's... um. It's kind of, I think, a bit of a step in the direction the Galaxy camera needs to go. It's um, what looks like possibly some kind of mirrorless setup with interchangeable lenses. Um, it's running ICS, not Jelly Bean. Um, that's basically all we know about it at this point. So it's um, it's probably going to have better image quality than the Galaxy camera. Um, smaller screen, I think. I think it's three point five. Um, but you know, the, the first uh, first Android powered camera to have um, interchangeable lenses. I think that's going to be a big deal. And if we see it at CES, that's going to be pretty cool. I have a question. What What's happened question? to the Polaroid camera we saw at CS last year? So mm. oh, yeah. Did they? Yeah, there was only was one it? ever made. <laughs> <laughs> and I touched it. That was kind of crappy. Um, yeah, I mean... That was that the one that was running gingerbread or something? No, nah, I don't think it was running gingerbread. <laughs> uh, I think it was running donut, actually. If I'm yeah. remembering right, it was... Wow. It was pretty basic. Find but that was um, that was a point and shoot, and that was yeah, yeah a very low end, wasn't it? So no, I, mm-hmm. I think you're right. I think we're going to see more. Yeah, but it was pretty bad. <laughs> well, and Sam- Samsung set the bar. I mean, Nikon yeah. and Samsung both came out at basically the same time, and the average consumer is going to look at them both side by side and say, "Well, ooh, this one looks nice. That other one, uh, that looks like just a normal camera." And they're, they're going to grab the Samsung. You know, the, the Samsung and the Nikon side by side. Here's the Nikon here, by the way. I mean, the, this is a point and shoot camera that happens to be running Android. The other one is Android with a, you know, mm-hmm. almost a micro four thirds type device on the other side of it. But this looks and feels like a point and shoot. Yeah, and I think it's going to take a while, maybe next year, uh, until yeah. we sort of hit the the sweet spot in the in the the high end and the mid the mid range with with these kinds of devices. I think that the mid range or the low end is going to, it's all going to be point and shoot stuff. It's going to be very similar to the Galaxy camera that we already have, um, and the high end is going to become these you know probably quite expensive micro four third type things um, that we're just starting to see now. And it's, again, it's not a bad idea, and I think Samsung Samsung's implementation of it was better than anybody else's yet. But uh, definitely, yeah. yeah, yeah. This is Gen One, so we we got a little ways to go. No, no, the better. exciting part to me is uh, if people will move over from just a standard Linux or mm-hmm. any of the other tiny embedded systems they use, and use Android instead with its pre-written libraries and framework. And any camera you go by, point and shoot, or you know, Micro Four Thirds or DSLR, whatever. It's all going to be connected because it's already there. All they have to do is write a front end to connect to your Dropbox. Right. Yeah. Or, and if you look at if you look at that from um, your perspective, people who are making cameras, then 
that's going to eliminate a lot of work for them. Okay, they're going to have to yes. get Android up and running, and maybe they're not going to be familiar with Android. Um, but you know, there's a lot of work with Wi-Fi and you know, cell data and all other stuff that's basically already done for them in Android. Right, and those are you know they they want to offer this stuff. It's just difficult to develop. And if the mm. people at Google are doing half the development for you, that's always a good thing. Yeah, and that's why we've seen Samsung do it first because Samsung makes point and shoot. Samsung already knows its way around Android. Yep. Um, so it's really it was, natural they brought out this first. It was perfect for Samsung, and, and the way they did it was perfect for them as well because it's mm-hmm. it's squarely a Galaxy device. I mean, there's no question. Mm. You hold it next to a Note or an S3, and you you know they're they're in the same family. And they've got a big honking lens on the back for people that want to take a whole lot better pictures. I think um, Google's JBQ, John Baptiste, uh, Quer- yeah, I'm totally mispronouncing his name. I'm sorry. I apologize. JBQ. That's why we, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think back to something, I think it was that he said once, and that is when you look at, at these different companies doing things you know, for the first time. So when you look at Nikon, you know, putting Android into a camera for the first time. It's of course it's not going to be anywhere near as good mm-hmm. as Samsung or you know if, if Motorola made one or you know whomever, uh, because they have the experience of doing the software and, and what it takes to you know to start customizing things. So you see something like this. My main complaint about the Nikon was it's stock gingerbread you know, with a phone on it or with a, a camera on it, and you know, whereas Samsung was was able to do a little bit more. And I think, you know, especially in the next year, it's going to get better. And the year after that, it's going to be even better. So we're, we're way early. So if I sound down on these, I don't, you know, I shouldn't yeah. be quite as hard on them, I think, as I have been. Um, but we've just seen so many damn devices this year. I can't help it. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, uh, since I have this laying here, Thunderbolt is going to get ice cream sandwich. Yeah. Unfortunately. Mm, coming soon. soon, they said, yeah. Coming soon. Speaking That's, of things I don't care about. Uh, you know what? I hope that never happens. And don't really was that. Because HTC already came out and said that the experience they got when they developed ice or you know ice cream sandwich for that particular family of phone sucked. It sucked. HTC doesn't want to make it, and Microsoft has to or uh, Microsoft apologies. Uh, Verizon you know, wants to fulfill a promise they made, that's not in the customer's best interest. Yeah. It's, they they weren't aware of what they would have to do to make it run well with ice cream sandwich, and it wasn't built for it. And that's just happens sometimes. It's one of those phones that, I mean, I remember getting this, and I remember being excited about it, and it was it was one of the early LTE phones. I tell mm. you, it's still it was almost two phone. years, wasn't it, since that thing yeah. came out? It's, it's, it'll be two years uh, next spring. Next March, and I mean, what a way we came, you know. Yep. Spring, spring 2011, spring 2012, <laughs> or even you know, spring 2012, right? I mean, it's it's night and day what they've been able to do. But, but man, gotta give them credit. Without the Thunderbolt, they wouldn't have been able to make the LTE network as as nice as they have. Mm-hmm. You Somebody's know, every be first. Even T-Mobile, who hasn't doesn't have a single LTE site live yet, benefits from the Thunderbolt. I agree. I think you're right. Um, I'm trying to find anything else we want to talk about before doing some... We got some really good emails and voicemails this week. Um, I've still got the DNA here. I started using it again this week. Alex is going to get to use it in Vegas. Um, I still like it. Guys in the forum seem to still like it. That's good. That's important. Yeah, I'm looking forward to trying it out. I think it's going to be there's going to be a lot in there that probably translates into whatever we see from HTC next year. That's the sort of stepping stone between the One X and the next sort of international right. high end thing. Yeah. Well, and again, it's the it's the Android version of this. And oh, so I I carried the 8X with me in uh, New Orleans. So I took the uh, I took the Nexus Four with T-Mobile. I took the 8X with AT and T. And just to try to force myself to use it a little more, and uh, you know, especially in a week where I was actually taking the weekend off and like wasn't worried about you know missing something and missing work. It's God, I love the hardware, I do, and I don't think Android phones are ever going to be quite as squarish as this. And I'm probably okay with that. Um, you know, talking with the other guys, we've gone back and forth on on which we like better. Um, 
But oh god, it's so thin. It feels so good. I I cannot wait to have Android on this. I mean, Windows Phone. It's interesting. Um, I think I've decided I'm just the wrong guy to try to to do an actual comparison. Like if if my job was not to, I mean, I I can do kind of a sterile. Here's what Phil thinks about Windows Phone. You know, tech blogger type thing. But my job is to use Google services and and Android, and I'm not sure that that email works any better than that. Um, you know, especially if, you know, if you're going to use Gmail, there's no better Gmail experience than Android, right? Just anything mm. else will not be as good. Actually, we need yeah, to I, that. Yeah, <laughs> you read my mind. Yes. Um, walk me through it, Alex. Um, well, I'm probably not the best person to walk, walk <laughs> you through, but basically, <laughs> I, know the gist, I don't know the technical details, but basically it's, um, it's to do with Google cutting off, um, uh, active, active sync server. access yeah, for so um, Gmail and, and calendar sync and all this other stuff for, um, I think it's, well, it's BlackBerry as well, but Windows Phone is the big deal because um, they've also announced that they're not going to be making any of their own proprietary apps for Windows Phone or Windows 8. Uh, yeah. And then they have kind of a basic Google search app, but I think that's probably the, the extent of of, um, of what they have. So on one, on the one hand, they're not developing apps for it. On the other hand, they're cutting off um, active sync. Which is right. going to make it more difficult for um, people to use Gmail with uh, with Windows Phone, and also I think impossible in some cases to make things like calendar sync and contact sync work. If you want to use Gmail on a non Android device, there are a couple of ways you can do it. One is through IMAP, and Renee, I might need you to step in here and, and help me out. Um, one is through IMAP, one is through Exchange Active Sync, um, and and same goes for not just you know, Windows Phone, but for the iPhone as well, right? So the iPhone, you have a, a couple options. But the iPhone has a separate way of doing Gmail, right, Renee? It's got, um, what's it called? It's, it's IMAP. It's got it's, three. You have the Active Sync, and you have the Gmail option, and then you have the Gmail app, which is right. better than the other options, but doesn't give you a unified inbox if you have extra Google accounts. Right, it, it's just like an extra app. And it, actually, it's a really good app if you haven't tried it, if you, if you get the chance to. It's, it's really it's well fantastic. done. It's fantastic. Yeah, but but IMAP and EAS Exchange Active Sync are the two we're talking about. Exchange Active Sync is just like it sounds. That's it's proprietary for Microsoft and works through their Exchange protocols. Um, you know, and, and back in the day, EAS, God, I mean, when I used it for uh, when uh, the newspaper, they used Exchange, so it was great for email, right? So you had your Microsoft way of doing things, and then you have your Gmail way of doing things, and they never quite worked as well as you would like them to. They've gotten better on the iPhone, right, Renee? I mean, it, iOS uses, it, it's IMAP something. It's, they, they don't play nicely together because Google has a very low simultaneous connection level and Apple is incredibly greedy about the amount of simultaneous connections they want. Right. Um, so a lot of people are using EAS, but um, going back to Neelay at the Verge, you know, did a good post a couple of weeks ago about uh, you know how EAS can kill your battery. Now, some people are seeing bad battery life. Renee, you said you were fine over EAS. I have right? three AES accounts, two Google and one Exchange, and I never had a battery hit. So. Yeah, I was using the 8X for a while and never noticed any um, battery issues with um, EAS. I think that's what I'm using through mine. I'd have to check. Um, uh, uh, yeah, but the big know. deal here is is Google is pulling that at the end of January, and everybody freaked out. They gave them, you know, a month and a half. Now that's not a lot of time in the tech world to to fix something like. Yeah, that. that's not enough time to get a patch out on US right. funds, especially when you got the holidays in the middle. It was also and weird because it was thing. for new connections. Like you but, could still keep it on a phone as long as you don't change phones, you're fine. Okay. But they now, to be fair, they don't have to send out a patch. That's true. All they need to do is support uh, iCal on their uh, Hotmail end, and you can sync your contacts and calendar through the Hotmail app. Now, somebody will correct me if I'm wrong, but that that's my understanding that it's like the iPhone email application will suck. You just put in at gmail.com and it sucks everything in. That can be done server-side for the Hotmail app as well. Yeah, Microsoft calls it iCalendar that... and they hide it. They don't make it very obvious how to do it, but it does support it, but they don't support right. card dev yet as far as I know. Okay, that yeah, Renee's got it. I just know that it's not that difficult but they're just not wanting to do it, and I'm sure they have a good reason. The, uh, do you guys think it's? Do you guys think it's? A, it's basically going to be a, a bit of a, a sort of a game of chicken, whether you know whether Microsoft want to, wants to act and and put 
Gmail and sync support back in, or whether they're going to try and use this to push people over to their own services? Is it, is it going to be that important for them? It's a big deal. It's, it's yeah, not a small you're, thing. I don't think, and we're all Google-ish fanboys here, let's be honest, uh, but I don't think you're going to be able to convince a bunch of people to just drop Gmail that quickly, instantly yeah. like that. Mm. Well, it's, here's my question, and I'm not necessarily pushing this one way or the other. Did Microsoft have have a, a duty to support CalDAV in this other, you know, IMAP form it, to properly support Gmail that they just don't have enacted yet? Should, no, should because it was already on like uh, yes, yeah, wasn't it? Why, why would they need well, to if, if Google already yeah, supports they, their they were way of doing things? They were depending on Google to support their existing. Which they were. Right. So. And they still are for everybody that's paying. And, that's, yeah, if you're on Google Apps, you know, for business, you're good. And I, military you know, and education. I just don't necessarily know enough about it to, to say one side's completely wrong here. And, and there might not be, you know, cut and dry answer. There's mm. also a bit but of history because Apple originally created CarDAV and CalDAV to try to make a free alternative to Microsoft's mm -hmm. Exchange system. So they, they probably weren't very happy with it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's Microsoft has pretty much a zero open source presence. They they just don't go that way. They like their proprietary stuff, and that's what they work on, and that's what they get perfected. Uh, none of it's ever perfect, but a lot of their stuff works really well, and that's what they want to focus on. They don't they don't want to care about anything else, and, and that's their slick. option. ActiveSync is really slick. Of all the of all the messaging services, it's the easiest to set up, and it, it just works the most. Well, I mean, you just set up on a on your Nexus Four. And Renee just got a Nexus Four, boys and girls, and you signed in. I mean, how easy was that? It was incredibly easy, but I consider that almost like iCloud on an iPhone because it's their own right. system. It's when you start dealing with cross compatible systems that ActiveSync, I think, shines because it's as easy on an iPhone as it is on a Windows phone. That's true. That's true. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, you know, we got a month and a half. I wonder. I just thought of this. The timing maybe is interesting because that whole thing's going down right about the same time as BB10 comes out. Coincidence? Mm, I, I don't think. Mm. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I mean, BB10, they've still got, okay, the announcement's the end of January. They've still got time to tweak things behind the scenes. And if, uh, you know, no one, do we know whether BB10 supports well, um, Cardav and Caldav yet? No idea. Mm. I'm Good not question. sure. But because I think it was only. I think it was only an issue on, on BB7 because that didn't, uh, and that was all based around Active Sync anyway. So mm. we'll have to see. Google also didn't come up and say, we're not going to support BlackBerry users with BB10. So chances are you're going to get a nice Gmail app, just like we have on <laughs> iOS and Android. Hey, look, okay, Kevin, uh, uh, BB10 <laughs> looks slick, guys. I mean, there's it Kevin looks Metzlick like in the uh, chat room. Yeah, Kevin's oh, got the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Old crack well, Kevin, Kevin himself. BB7 doesn't matter. Kevin said it right there. BB7 doesn't matter. I'm tweeting right. that out right now. Kevin said BB7 doesn't matter. Oh. Oh, man. No, we, we've got more time. I'm not dealing with that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, you want to do some emails and voicemails? We'll get the hell out of here for two weeks. Yes. Yep, let's do it. Yes. Shall we? Um, how about we start out with, how about Fernando is back? Fernando. Rene. He says he's got to fix the pipe. <laughs> Takes me back to my college days. <laughs> I'll fix this in post. <laughs> can, you, can you do an email? I'm just have to re we have to rewire some stuff. Yeah, sure. Okay, we will do emails first. Ed writes. I use Google Now on my Nexus Four, but not on my Nexus Seven. To me, it doesn't make sense to use Google Now on a tablet. So I'm asking, how do you use Google now? Do you all use it on your and do you use it on all your Android devices? Um, I mean, it's there. You you don't have to use it necessarily, right? Right. I I don't find myself using it much on a tablet either. No, I I do on a phone. I mean, the uh, talking about the Galaxy camera that has Google now, and there's no no way I'm ever using Google now on a camera. <laughs> um, it, it's what? it's a feature of the OS. I guess it's good. It's a good thing that it's there, but. Um, I, I think for on, on the Nexus 7 specifically, um, 
that is great for um, for flying. And if you've got um, flight information and stuff on, on a Nexus Seven through Google Now, that's going to be really useful. Um, but yeah, not not so much compared to the phones. Well, but that would involve me sobering up and getting on a plane, so I'm just <laughs> not going to use it. <laughs> it. It's still really good for the weather because every morning my wife's getting ready and the kids are getting ready. She says, "What's it like outside?" And I said, "What's the weather like today?" And it says. Today's forecast for Pensacola is 73 degrees with a thunderstorm. Done. Easy. Quick. Eat that, Siri. That's what I, I, I use the uh, the shipping feature, too, because I got packages coming here all the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, it's just a quick and easy way to, to see what's coming in and, and get the uh, the tracking code. So I'm lazy, oh, which is cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I love using it, but I always just end up using it on my phone. Yeah. Yep. All right, who wants the next one? I got it. Armando writes, Armando here from Puerto Rico. I've had the Nexus 4 for two weeks now, and I'm loving every bit of it. It's fast, beautiful, and everything I want for a phone. The only problem is that the back of the phone fully touches the surface you put it on, and it's starting to get scratches. It's such a nice device that I don't want to see it get all scratched. The question is, do you have any idea when it will be back in stock? Or since you have been very giving lately, do you have one of those bumpers laying around for me? God, I know where this is going, don't I? <laughs> yep, Phil, do you got one of those bumpers? Armando needs one. What happened to the one I sent you? I got a bumper, Armando. I forgot. Came in a package. You upset my mailman. Oh, yeah? This has no return address on it, and I don't like the weird way this was addressed. <laughs> you better be careful opening it. <laughs> it was addressed to you. Jerry the Body Hildenbrand. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I'm but, yes, so Armando, doing that from now on. I am Jerry at and- doing. Jerry at AndroidCentral.com. <laughs> Shoot me an email. Tell me where to send it. I've got your bumper. The bumper keeps the back glass off. I took it out of the pocket package and tried it. Uh, it won't get scratched up. As far as when they're coming back in stock... We have no idea, man. <laughs> we're 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 tired of pretending. Google just we don't know. <laughs> it's God, it, and I'm. I got to the point where I didn't even. Speaking of things I don't care about, you know, doing stories every time something's out of stock, and you know, if it comes in stock, that's one thing. But it's like I don't know. Just go look. If, I mean, honestly, if you're coming to us to find out if you can buy it from them, you're gonna have to go to them anyway. Just go look. It's cool. You have my permission. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, I've had to buy stuff over the past couple of weeks, and it's disappointing. But, ugh, they, God, they got to fix that. It's, guys, it's Christmas time, and, and you can't send what are the easiest devices to buy for presents. And cheapest. And cheapest. Mm. Yep. If, if I know you in real life, you didn't get an Nexus 4 this year, but blame Google. Yeah. Not our fault. Instead, yeah. you got a card and a fruitcake. Don't even bother opening it. <laughs> All right, Alex, you get the last uh, email. Uh, Mr. Jazz writes, uh, do we know if Google is in fact working to f- uh, on a fix for the bugs plaguing Nexus owners on 4.2.1? Um, both my Galaxy Nexus and Nexus 7 reboot several times daily, seemingly randomly, but always during Play Store updates. But the power drain issue is the one really driving me nuts. Uh, the Nexus 7 seems to be the worst Um I now have to charge it nightly, even with light use. Um, even if I don't pick it up for 48 hours, it's dead. Uh, any encouraging rumblings from Mountain View? Um, so um, I haven't had any problems with 4.1, 4.2.1 on... Actually, take that back. Uh, I had the Wi-Fi bug on the on the GeneX for a while. That's the one where it just can't connect to Wi-Fi networks and you have to factory reset it, so I don't know what's going on there. But on the whole, it's been pretty good on the other two. Um so, I mean, it, of course, it's a big new version of the OS. There are going to be issues that need to be addressed. And we've already seen, I think, in server logs, we've seen Android uh, 4.2.2 uh, floating around. Um, yeah, actually, so I, I think there's going to be a... Yeah, I think we'll see it eventually, whether we'll get it before the holidays. Probably not. Um, but it, it's out there, and I think it's going to be early next year if it if we don't see it even sooner. It looks no. like... Um, so starting the 4th, December 4th, through the 14th um, and, and the highest number of pings we got was on the 14th and then it almost dropped off to nothing and it's, you know, we're, we're not talking any more than a couple hundred pings here 
Um, so either I think there are, there are um, bug reports on Google Code from um, four two two as well. I think we're looking yeah. before. Yeah. So I'm I'm sure they're working. Now, on it. I would expect to see it before you know we get back after uh, after the New Year holiday. But before we walk away from this, no SP eighty nine in the chat room has said something very important. Mr. Jazz, do you have uh, widgets HD? You know, installed. Uh, what the heck is the name of it again? Somebody help me out in the chat room. Widgets HD. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the name. Yeah. Okay. Our beautiful widgets. There is a bug. HD widgets. That's what it is. Yeah. There's a bug in there that a lot of people. It's just killing their battery. Hmm. Uh, it kills the battery on my Nexus Four. Doesn't bother my Nexus Seven at all. I have no idea what's going on, but you might want to uninstall it if it's. You know, and I think, uh, I think the other one that people are having problems with originally, although it's been updated, so maybe that's not an issue anymore, is, is currents. I think that there are a lot of people having trouble with the um, uh, the Nexus Seven on currents, where it was draining the battery and they're yes. getting lag and stuff. Yep, I read that too. So I mean, it's it's there's app issues. Uh, that's why it's a lot to be said for people are going to hate me for this. The way Apple doesn't publicly beta test their new operating system like Google does, <laughs> they let developers handle it for mm-hmm. a few months. Mm. Whereas Google says, "Oh, it's done. Here it is. If you bought a Nexus, guess what you get?" Ah, ah, ah. and we test it for them. And this is the kind of thing that happens when you do that. Mm. And if you have anything like this where it's you think it's caused by apps, the easiest thing to do, you know, other than just uninstalling apps and seeing if it fixes it, is just do a factory reset and. Although it yep. takes time and it's annoying, um, it, just restore everything from scratch. Um, don't you know? Don't tech, check the box to da- re-download all your apps in Google Play because that might just bring the problem back. Set it, it up clean from scratch yeah. and see how that goes. If you hack your phone or if you use a Nexus, I, I'm, I hate to say it, but never use that feature. Go slow because you are on the bleeding edge by design, and and that's what you wanted. So enjoy it. Okay, let's do some voicemails and then we're out of here till 2013. Who are we doing first? Hey, I enjoy your uh, central podcast. This is Fernando again. And I wanted to ask you a question. Um, you think Samsung next year will um, remove SD card and remove a battery and all that like every other OEM is doing? Or they will stay... Or they will stay true to what they've been doing always. Maybe because they've been so successful on it, on their phone, maybe they'll leave it on. And also, I got some advice for some of the people that have a, a Galaxy uh, and, uh, Galaxy 7 or a 10 that, that's doing a, uh, is, is doing a second account for, for kids, uh, and, you know, for privacy and, and, you know, so the kids don't go into the internet and look for stuff. Um, I, I could recommend two things on it. One, when you do the second account, I um, mean, install a launcher like Nova or Apex and remove or, or hide, uh, you know, applications that you don't want the kids to uh, to view, like the browser or other things, you know. You could do that. Or you could uh, get a, uh, an application called App Locker in the uh, App Store. And what it does is um, it, uh, it, it, it lets you assign uh, an apps to be, to be uh, you know, to put password on them. So, it, so they can't get into the browser, your email, or any other private stuff that you want them to look at, you know? So that's uh, some advice. Maybe, you know, some people will, will, will you know, will, will use it. Okay, guys, take care. Bye-bye. Yep. You think, they, hmm, you think they're going to get rid of re- removable battery and SD card and stuff? I, if they decide to go unibody with smaller bezels, they're going to have to get rid of the removable battery. That's mm. just a fact of physics. If they don't, the, the Galaxy S3 sure sold well with the design it has. Uh, why change it if it works? And there's uh, also the fact that um, there's also, also the fact that every single I think actually yeah every single Samsung device this year that hasn't been a Nexus um, has had both removable storage and removable battery. Right. The storage, you know, I just hope that they support it if they keep it a little bit better than they are now. And Samsung's smart. I think they will. I don't, I don't think they're going to take it away. 
And I think as TouchWiz matures, you're going to see better support for the SD card instead of now it's just, you know, it's like a Dropbox folder that you can't integrate. Uh, I think Samsung will find a way to build it into the system like it used to be before Google dropped support. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, I think it's more likely that they'll leave it in than they'll take it out. I, I don't see Samsung removing features is, is what it gets mm. down to. I think that they've got so many features in touch with already and the you know their advertising is also so much about what you can actually do with phones then right. um, that I, I think they're probably going to leave it in. And the people buying them love it. Just Samsung, yeah. get rid of that, that menu button, please. <laughs> yeah, Let's all get on the same button. page so apps can all just do away with it. It's not so much the presence of a menu button as the fact that you don't have a task switching button that bugs me about that. Yeah. That it just seems to slow you down when you're using it. That's uh, that's my take on that. I agree. All right, let's move to CJ. Hello, Phil and crew. This is CJ from the forums. Well, actually, CJ. One zero zero five seven in the forums. On the last podcast, the gentleman was asking about the uh, reviews on Google Play. Uh, from what I understand, your past reviews will not change to show your username. It's only when you post a new review that it will show up. Anyway, love the show. Keep up the good work. Bye. A- absolutely, I got a couple emails about that through the week and tried it myself. That's exactly what's happening. Uh, all right. How about Daniel? Hey, this is Daniel Scully uh, for the Android Central podcast. Uh, hey, uh, I was just calling because a uh, couple, I listened to the podcast a couple podcasts ago, and I heard a guy call in about inductive uh, chargers um, for the Galaxy S3. Um, and, uh, he was wondering where he could get them and stuff like that. And, uh, you ended up, uh, just, uh, giving him one, um, which, uh, was very generous of you. Um, and, um, but I was very interested cause I was wondering where you actually get them. Um, and so I, after that podcast, I thought, Hey, I, I should call in and ask where you actually get them. And then I thought, Hey, maybe Phil will might give me one. Ha ha ha. And then the next podcast, somebody actually called in and asked if you would give him one, and you actually gave him one. So I kind of underestimated Phil's um, extreme generosity. Um, but, yeah, I was just uh, interested in wondering where you would actually get a inductive charger for Galaxy S3. And, you know, Phil, if, if you would want to give me one as well, yeah, I, I wouldn't complain. I'm just saying. Um, on a uh, completely unrelated subject, uh, I'd, I'd just like to say how uh, how good looking of a guy Phil is, um, you know, uh, with those uh, <laughs> dreamy brown eyes and award winning smile. And you know, yeah, I mean, he's a he's a good looking guy. But you know, that's a completely unrelated uh, topic, uh, completely unrelated to uh, you having uh, given away uh, inductive um, chargers for. Uh, Galaxy S3. But, um, yeah, that's my question. I uh, love the site. Uh, I don't think there's a single news story you guys put out that I don't read, and I listen to every single podcast you guys make. So um, keep up the good work. Fine. Yes, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I have one more. I have one more to give away. I, I still have the original one from the guy who started all this. If you're out there, email me. I need to send this to you. Yes, Daniel has one coming, and then that's it. I'm out of inductive chargers. Where we got it uh, was off eBay. I think they got shipped from Hong Kong or something. Um, you know, we did a post on it back then, and I ordered like three or four. I forget how many. Um, and I don't actually use it uh, because I don't. I, I need to get a, a Qi back for it now, actually, since I've got the uh, the Energizer Qi pad here. Um, so yes, Daniel has one coming. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Oh. <sighs> God, I'm going to get hounded for this the rest of my life, aren't I? Now I know the next time I call and ask for a car to tell you how sexy you are. No good <laughs> deed goes unpunished. All right, let's do uh, Trevor's voicemail. 
Hey guys, this is Trevor Smith from Kansas City. I had a question about Bluetooth stuff. I'm a big Bluetooth guy, and I know audio files will hate me for that, but I constantly use it, but I've noticed I'm using a Galaxy S3 with CyanogenMod. I've noticed that if you have your volume, your media volume, down, then you connect your Bluetooth device. Even if your Bluetooth volume is all the way up, you can't get any audio out of your device um, or out of your Bluetooth stereo speakers, whatever you're, you're hooked up to. I then have to disconnect my Bluetooth, turn up the vol media volume, then reconnect in order to get to work. I just wonder if that's just a glitch in Cyanogen mod or if you have a workaround fix or if I'm just being a noob. If you let me know, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, Bluetooth is so wonky still. I'm sorry. Like, when it works, it can work really well, but especially for music, it's, it's, I can listen to, like, podcasts, like, spoken word, and, you know, the news and stuff like that. I can't listen to music over Bluetooth. It's just not good enough for me. And the connection can be wonky. Jerry, do you use it all? Uh, my wife uses Bluetooth. I've got a three-foot-long aux cable that I plug into the jam box. Screw Bluetooth. It sounds hissy and poppy. Yeah. That's, you know, that's just me. A lot of people don't hear the hissing and the popping that I hear. Yeah, I've never used it for music. Um, the only thing I really use Bluetooth for is um, just, you know, dumb peripherals like keyboards, mice, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, works well enough for that kind of device. But Oh, it works great for that, yeah. I mean, I use a joystick and a mouse. All right. Oh, hey. Trevor's got one more voicemail, actually. I guess we should play. Also, since you've been feeling so generous lately, so with your <laughs> phones, I was wondering if you just had GSM uh -huh. phones lying around with Android. I work with some nonprofits that uh, they like Android, but they can't get them either in Africa or I work a lot in China. Um, but, you know, they're just poor over there. And I work with some underground churches and other nonprofit groups that are just trying to help the poor and all that. So if you have just old Android phones, nobody wants anymore that have GSM specifically. Uh, they usually run on any of the bands. Um, but uh, any old GSM phones, let me know. If you want to just uh, stockpile them and give them away, I would greatly appreciate it. So, uh, oh, it'd be nice if they're unlocked too. And it's just thanks, guys. Bye. With the fillings out of my teeth while I'm at it? That's... <laughs> We, he didn't I'm, tell you you were sexy. I know. Uh, see, I was—I I got a big bag of phones I was just about to give you, and then you didn't flatter me enough. Trevor, <laughs> sorry, man. You were that close. No. Sorry, I don't have that many phones lying around, actually. And actually, I've been trying to get rid of stuff out of here whenever possible, which is how we've been giving a lot of stuff away lately. <laughs> um, no, I'm sorry. I don't have any old phones laying around because I got rid of most of them, which is the way I like it. I got a little desk space back. My wife's very happy about it, too. Well, actually, the other day, she she was quizzing me, pulling stuff off a, a, a chest of drawers and said, what's this? What's this? That's the Thunderbolt. What's this? That's the uh, battery back for, or the uh, battery door for the extended battery for the Thunderbolt. What's this? My touch. What's the, uh, she didn't stump me. She didn't. I won. You don't have a Fender Edition my Touch 3G laying around, do you feel? No, that thing was awesome. I was thinking about that the other day. Because I, I would tell you you're sexy all night long if you give me one, one of the first phones I reviewed <laughs> in the seconds. was that Fender Edition. Can you believe that T-Mobile still sells the Hero, by the way? The Reefer. Seriously? But still. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's why uh, in our best phones for U.S. carriers, it's like, it's like you know what? T-Mobile still sells phones. I had no idea. And that was one of them. It's, I mean, it's refurbed, and I guess you know, for an entry level phone, you could maybe do worse. That's weird because they don't. Do they sell a sensation anymore? And the um, what was that other one? The Amaze. I don't remember. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. The, and the Amaze wasn't bad. You know, it's a year old hmm. now, but pretty wild. But the Hero, I got a soft spot for the Hero. I love that phone. Yeah, you did. I ought to get a new one. <laughs> you should. You can probably get it for like fifty bucks. All right, that's it, boys and girls. We are done for the year, episode 120. And 
I know I've said it a lot. I've said it before, and I, I think I can say this on behalf of Jerry and Alex, but screw you, San Diego. No, that's not it. Um, you know, <laughs> thank you all so much for listening. This podcast is fun, and it's going to keep being fun. And, uh, you know, it's, it's time out of our day, but I think it's time well spent. And so you guys are the ones who have made this, you know, the greatest Android podcast in the world. And I promised myself I wasn't going to cry. Okay. I'm all right now. So I hope everybody has good holidays and uh, see you, I guess, first of the year. We might end up doing a Mobile Nations podcast between now and uh, CES. And we've got CES coming up the second week of January. Uh, Alex is going to be there. I'll have Andrew Andrew Vaca and uh, Andrew Bartonic be his first show with us. So we're going to have a blast. I want to make Alex wrap it up tonight. Hmm. I guess I'm going to have to open up the show notes then. Um... Be sure to email us at podcast at androidcentral.com. You can also get us all on Twitter. The site is at Android Central. Phil is at Phil Nickinson. Um, Jerry is at GB Hill. Uh, I am at Alex Toby. You can follow all of our other writers on the site uh, and also find us on Google+. Plus. Um, we're brought to you, as ever, by shopandroid.com. You can call us at 888-468-6158. Uh, and you can leave voicemail at that same number, extension 222. Yep. 888-468-6158. Yep. Hey, we sh- now. Huh? Wait, Alex has to say <laughs> shaken, not stirred. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't. You are the next Bond. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's it. Chat room, thank you guys for a great year as well. And uh, we will see you all on the flip side. Stick a fork in it. Happy holidays, everybody. See ya. The last show of the year, and you guys finally do that right. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> awesome. Thank <laughs> you.